Hello everybody, and welcome back to the Dork Vision stream. The uh, stream here can be seen and witnessed and visualized every Sunday from 9pm to midnight Eastern Standard Time. You can also watch our sister stream, The Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, on Wednesdays from 7 to 10. I have books on DriveThruRPG and the DMs Guild, and you can support me on Patreon slash Noble Crumpet and join the Crumpet Kingdom in the Discord. And with that wall of text generated, I think that we are good to go. It's so, so nice that you do those now. Ho hopefully, um, you know, it doesn't, the, the stream doesn't just cut out like last time. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, sorry for the sudden stop last stream. Uh, you didn't miss much. You missed maybe like a few items that were discovered um, before we immediately quit. I don't know what happened. I was say, did um, you ever figure that out? But I guess not. I think it was I mean, my computer updating, like, at midnight oh, right. or something. Yeah. <laughs> my computer decided it's a hard cutoff tonight, folks. Um, but yeah, you just rest assured, you didn't miss anything. Uh, these guys, Edelon Groves, um, fought and defeated Prince Kelvin in his lair in the nave of Mephistar, a frozen hellscape once a dwarven kingdom in Mount Mordensamen. Amongst the ruins was an amphitheater filled with victims of the cult's cloning, who are now frozen in ice. You guys used the spell Hellfire to free them all. After freeing them, you guys went to work exploring the ancient magical laboratories in Kelvin's lair. That is right where we left off. Oh, also, weird note. Um, so what's the um, 
with the die for uh, Hero's Feast because we realized our pets probably would have gotten a boost from that. It was a D10, I think. I'll D10? Look, yeah, I'll look it okay. up. Yeah, and we will assume... I'll, I'll put an icon on the retainers now because I said I was going to give them, like, an icon and just ignore the next hit. I thought you just, I thought you just gave them an extra hit point. Um, I didn't. They, they technically don't uh, have one. I think just an icon's fine. Uh, yeah. It's just 2D10. Like 2d10? Okay. Oh, okay. Just yeah, that's about one guys. hit at this level, so makes sense. This will be for the dust flick. That's put, good. I put a little one mm. icon next to all of them to indicate that they have one extra health. Okay. Uh, so and I'm for you I'll guys, right reference the people are right outside the door over here. That is where uh, you guys told them to go. They are just kind of hunkering down in that ancient ruin. Um... We also yeah, explored up here where there was treasure. Yes, the king was able to do that with uh, Ruby Dust, but they're still going mm -hmm. to they're still going to need um, eight hours to recover their spells. Oh wait, no, they can't recover their spells because they Why don't not? have their spell book. No, we gave yes, them something else. Yes, they do. Remember, I gave them the um, oh what was it? I deleted it from. Well, but the. Atlas that can yeah. be used as yes. a spell focus that has all the teleportation magic in it. Yeah, they okay. just need eight hours to be able to rest. to tune to it, if anything. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, they just need eight hours to prepare it for the the rest and the attunement. Uh, but yes, that I do remember that now. All right. Um, I think oh, yeah. so. You guys found uh, some potions in this little area here after breaking through the door. Um. You guys identified They're them. They're currently thawing in yeah. Dusk Flicker's wings. Yes. Mm -hmm. Chili. Yes. Uh, there's a potion of blur, a potion of bear's endurance, and a potion of supreme healing amongst them from your and identification. Potions don't need concentration. They do not. Um, Zumasu, in mm -hmm. this chamber, there's a bunch of uh, strange, like, uh, astrological devices, um, scrolls charting the movements of the planets and the planes as well. Uh, amongst things, there is a magical set of goggles uh, laid inside of a drawer. Ah. Uh, it's, emitting, it's emitting divination magic. Okay, can I just investigate them to make sure they ain't trapped? You certainly can. Then I'll probably just hand them off to Bill Crash for Arcana. Right. Yeah. Um, well, with an 11. They look safe. I mean, can't imagine trapped goggles. Don't look at, like there's uh, anything around them either. Just be mm -hmm. wary of uh, getting rings on around your eyes. I carefully pull out the drawer and take out the goggles. And the, um, there's nothing else in the room, right? Uh, there's a lot of stuff, but it would take a while to pick through it, and it doesn't look particularly relevant. Nothing is like glowing, I guess. There's no the magical theory. items in the room. Okay. I'll just bring the goggles over to Boom Crash. Boom Crash. Because these goggles were glowing with magical energy, right? Yeah. I am under the assumption that you guys are using detect magic and identify where necessary. Yeah. So I'll bring this over to Boom Crash. Here you go. Yeah. This, these have some magics. Okay. Okay. And if you have identify, then uh, you identify them as goggles of x-ray vision. Curve okay. goggles, excellent. <laughs> what does that do? <laughs> only, only for ancient skeletons. It acts as a ring of X-ray vision, except that they are goggles. They occupy a different slot. Ah, uh, goggles, ring, uh, but for your eyes, yes. <laughs> yeah, two rings. One the important each question other. is: Are they attunement? Uh, they do require attunement, but while wearing it, you can use an action and speak a command word. When you do, you see through solid matter for one minute. Last, uh, it has a radius of 30 feet, and to you, solid objects appear transparent, uh, but they don't let light pass through them. The vision can penetrate one foot of stone, one inch of metal, or three feet of wood or dirt. Can it go through lead? It does not uh, go through lead. <laughs> so for most walls it can't specifically see through, but it can see through a shield, possibly? Um, if Like armor? It could go through a thin wall, like one foot of mm. stone. It's a uh, Superman logic. Can't can't see through lead. Yeah, and then one inch of metal, so it couldn't go through a metal 
Maybe a metal door, maybe not. More so Obviously, like if somebody was wearing door. armor, as it was saying. Armor, so like if somebody was hiding be, something on the person, you could see through their breastplate maybe type thing. You probably could, yeah. Armor is probably thinner than one inch. That armor. would be really heavy if so. <laughs> armor is very thin. Unless it's like a massive, gigantic creature. Well, we don't got a two minute slots mostly. Anybody want to wear this? Oh, no. the retainers might have slots. Yeah. I think Donatello doesn't, so probably not for him. I think he was stacked. Maria might be stacked, but I don't know with attunement. Trying to open her thing. I think she's still weird. So oh, God, why is she still weird? Oh, right, Maria, not Parador. Yeah, she's still weird. I'll just go from those sheet. Uh, what do we got? Magic item. She's got the, the male. Did the plate need to be attuned? Uh, no, that shouldn't require attunement. Okay, then the only thing she has attuned is the animated shield, so she could wear it, I guess, technically. She wants extra vision. So yeah, any any other retainers wanted, or can I give it to Maria? Uh, Paranor, would you be interested? I mean, I'd be able to investigate things a bit more closely. Is that behind? And Paranor has one slot left. So we you... could give it to her. Yeah, look through that door right now instead of trying to unlock it, see what's in there. If it's useful. Mm. Except a two minute takes time, but it would be yeah. cool. Shit. Well, All right. you know, fine. Open the door anyway. Um, trying to create a new Maria token. Also, with the goggles, can you toggle them on and off so you don't have to use the full minute in one sitting? Uh, yeah, it's a command word. Oh, every use requires a minute. And you only get one just, use per day? Just take off the goggles. Done. Put it on your forehead like a JRPG character. <laughs> there. I understand why I'm seeing it. Okay, uh, so this occurs for one minute. Whenever you use the ring again before taking a long rest, you must succeed on a 15 DC constitution save or gain one level of exhaustion. Interesting. You can use it as much as you want, as much as you can take. Okay, just the first one's free and the rest take a little effort. Yeah. Gonna give you a headache. Gonna give you radiation poisoning. Oh boy. Oh, okay. I get the vibe. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm made of cancer now. I think this Maria works, by the way. Um. Uh, where is she? Done. She's in the other room. I need to. Okay. I see. Yeah, I see the things for her. That's good. I give her vision as well. All right. Okay. Yeah, she seems to. Yeah, that was the land of the living, Maria. <laughs> I was getting obnoxious, so glad that that got fixed. I gotta be broken next session. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah, she got the things that are important: the attacks, the and the, the abilities. Although, anybody got a ranged weapon, I realize he, she might be good with the bow if we can pass one out. I don't know if we got a spare one. I glare. That's fair. <laughs> door. I would like to open this door. Alright. Um, just one memento. Just organizing stuff on a different screen. That's fair. If there's anything that's here... I was here replacing that's the new Maria. Yeah. <laughs> that's fair. Alright. So, uh, you are going to go open this door. Uh, yeah, it takes some time, but you chip through all of the uh, the ice in front. Let me have you make a athletics check to see your expedient. Athletics. Not expedient. Mm. It takes a bit more time than you uh, had thought to do so. So I'm going to say it probably takes you like 30 minutes. Can I just use a sunblade and melt it? I guess that's oh. really radiant damage. It's radiant damage. damage. It's going to... Sunlight melts ice. Eventually. <laughs> well, I mean, Ali, Arctic is uh, you know, subject to the sun half, half the year. Yeah. Doesn't it's still know. melting. Um, can yeah, I it give does. her a shovel to help at least? You like could. Style thing. Cough, you cough, could... center smite. Cough, cough. 
If and only just, we had a fire generating shooting. device. Yeah, just keep shooting at the door. I can do that. Let's keep shooting at the door. Yeah. Um, you, you use Cinder Smite then instead. The ice isn't magical, so it does eventually melt. It takes a while because the damage isn't um, great. Thanks. Well, because it's not a creature you're sneak attacking. Uh, bludgeoning damage would probably be more effective. Either way, uh, you melt through the ice and the door becomes passable. Inside, uh, there's a bunch of alchemical tools, much like the room to the north of here. Um, on the shelf, there are a bunch of uh, strange potions. Um, they aren't emitting any magic from the looks of it. They seem to be reagents from the labels. You know, Eye of Newt, stuff like that. Okay. So probably nothing specific, but if there... there's anything in here other people need. Sure. Yeah. Uh, as Zumosu gets near with his detect magic, you can identify that there is a magical scroll in this room. Well, he can hey. identify. I'm going to open up another door. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I'll yeah, go... yeah. If it's there, go for it. Yeah, something's going on. I'm going to go look at the scroll. Why'd you close the door? I need to close the door. Oh, I think he got trapped in it. Now. Yep. You guys have this oh, no. habit of uh, <laughs> just click I'm, on the I'm, corner of you. I'm yeah. Good. Dan's yeah, like, good. help. I'm good. I clicked through the door for a second, but then the server reset. All right. Um, yeah, you don't find anything else unusual in this chamber, though there is uh, the scroll. If you bring it to Boom Crash, you can identify that it is a uh, spell scroll of Canian Ice. It is a ninth level spell, and it's similar to the trap that you faced in the southern hallway. Probably also that what was used to freeze all the prisoners. Powerful spell. Yeah. Um, seems so, yeah. It's Canian Ice is what you're calling it. Um, What level is this, the spell? It's a ninth level spell that deals 16d8 cold damage if you succeed or traps you in a permanent ice prison on a failed save. The saving throw is constitution-based. What's the saving throw? Well, it's whatever the caster is. Oh, I thought the scrolls were usually based on the scroll itself. That's a That's good why. point. Um, we'll say it's at least 19. Okay. Could it... Boom Crash is the only one who's decent at Arcana, so she should have it. Yeah, probably. She takes it, but she sort of holds it at a distance. It's kind of an uncomfortable scroll to have. Keep in mind that if you try to cast a spell above your level, there's a chance that something could go wrong. No is pressure. It a, is it an AoE cone, you said? Um. Or is it a single target? It is an AoE cone. Lovely. Door. It's a smaller cone, though. I'm going to say that it's a 30-foot cone, rather than 60 feet like cone of cone. And it can still hit allies, I'm going to guess. So, yeah, here's your new, here's your new boom crash. I'll keep a hold of that. All right. Uh, Allie, mm. now you break through mm -hmm. this door eventually. That was weird. What? I'll help her with a shovel. Can I help her with a shovel so it doesn't take forever? Pew, 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 pew. Shovel. All right. Your assistance. You open the like, door. De-icing a driveway. Yeah, pretty much. She puts someone, the salt down. Yeah, someone puts the salt down and the other person comes with a shovel. Inside, you see oh, a massive stack of rubble. This has okay. been seen before by, yep. well, Elena, but that's about it. Alright, we got two more doors, and then we can move on. If there's anything useful, don't forget, grab it. I, I don't think I'll see anything useful. I'll take a quick investigation to see. Yeah, there's no magic coming from this chamber. Okay, and I don't see anything else of note. Not that you can see. Alright. Are we, And Donatello uh... to help us break this so we can speed this thing along. Easy peasy. You guys managed to break open the last few doors. But you guys are here for, um, at least an hour. Yeah. That's fair. My freedom of movement is gone. But the ice melt turned all my oil into just, like, a weird, like, texture now. <laughs> Also, I guess, question, have we been receiving any sort of messages across the uh, Sending Stone? Or have heard anything, essentially? Uh, oh, you have not You have not heard anything yet. Okay. Oh, did we ever... We, we checked Prince Calvin's body and there wasn't much on it, right? 
No, there wasn't much on him. Uh, we probably should have checked his... Did we check his ears? I didn't. Mm. Look, they already know that we're here, and he's already dead. I guess that's fair. They can't really kill him twice. I guess. I, I have the walkie-talkie from the stooge we killed. Yeah. Um, so, I'm already monitoring that. Oh no, Prince Kelvin was a clone. There's another one. Shit. God damn it. Oh. <laughs> Uh, Mao, you search into this room, and it appears it w it's a uh, sort of um, almost exploration and necromancy in this room. There's a skeleton on the table that is covered in like strange runes, um, various arcane etchings. Um, there's plenty of vials of necromantic reagents like blood and uh, like dirt from a grave, pieces of uh, a tombstone and stuff like that. Gross. Paranor, I found a thing for you to play with. Yippee! Yeah, yeah. I hate this child. <laughs> Ooh, those short little nerd legs. <laughs> <laughs> Whose sassy child is this? <laughs> oh, let me at him. Paranor goes to investigate, I suppose. Please don't bring them back to life. They could be bad. Have them do an arcana Worse check. Worse than us, at least. Hmm. This stuff is kind of rudimentary. Uh... Can't see exactly what they were trying to do, but I mean, it's clear that they were trying to use necromancy for something. There is a magic item in here, though. Not yeah. sure what this one's doing here. Okay, let me take a look first. I'll do an investigation on the magical item. Hey, Mon, you want to talk to a dead guy? Uh, not. I mean, not really. Okay. I don't. I don't know what I'm looking at. <laughs> yeah, dead bodies. You were right, Paranor. Oh, also, I didn't prepare any of that because I thought we were going to be fighting. Do I just that, see like a general aura on the body? <laughs> I just need to take the whole body out? Um, the body isn't emitting any magic. Oh, so where's the magic coming from? The magic is coming from a strange rod on the desk. I got a one, so I'm picking it up. Fuck. Alright, you pick up the rod. It doesn't do anything. Okay. The the rod is made out of brass. Um, the, the fucking rod. <laughs> there's little, like, <laughs> oh, no. flame icons on it uh, that start to glow with an orange hue uh, when you pick it up. And the tip of the rod is a cool blue ice, uh, like, colored gem. I think it's a wand. I'm going to bring it over to Boom Crash. <laughs> After identification, it is a magical rod. Called a rod of flame extinguishing. Hmm. This could be useful. For ah. what? We're fighting a bunch of ice people. No, no, it's useful in the kitchen. We'll bring it back home, put it in the kitchen. Oh, you so, know what? That's pretty good. Yeah, that, that's fair. It's a fire extinguisher. Oh, is he putting it's a fire extinguisher. On the thingy? Yeah. I am. It's useful. It has 10 charges. And it destroys fires. It does what it and says on the tin. Th no, it doesn't. Three charges of dealing 66 force damage to oh, a force damage. fire That's elemental nice. creature? Yes. It puts out fire <laughs> elemental creatures, as well as puts out medium fires for one charge, or larger, greater fires for th two charges. So you Isn't can blow up something it? fire related. Um, is it attunement required? That's always the big question. Uh, yeah. Is. Is. Wall of Flame. What would that count as? Large? Actually, I'm going to say this one is not. Oh, cool. You, you shouldn't uh, need to attune to a fire extinguisher. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's safety protocols. You don't need attunement to use it. Um, yeah, just because we're the cult of Hellfire doesn't mean we need to like skip on uh, safety. I don't know. It, it feels like elitist kind of thing. Oh, only wizards get to be safe. Peasants <laughs> still have to deal with fire the traditional way. So, question again. Wizards. Does Wall of Fire count as a large fire? Uh, sure does. Okay. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's good. That's yeah. good. By large, I mean, like, four spaces or greater. By medium, mm -hmm. I mean one five-foot space. Okay, weird question. Could you use a reaction to cancel out, like, a fire breath? Uh, if you readied your action. Okay, I'd okay. take that. You'd have to you'd have to spend a turn knowing that a dragon appeared type thing. That's fine. Yeah. But still, that's useful. So who wants yeah, yeah, the rod yeah. of fire extinguishing? 
Also, I don't want it if nobody else wants it. It does appear that Mao has been pro this whole time, so <laughs> she's crawling around, <laughs> crawling nice. around on the ground. <laughs> this is my my cringe level of can we move on, please? Okay, Mao, put that in your inventory, nice and yep, yep. Get ready to extinguish some fires. Oh, right. the distance actually might be important too, because if Mao's sneaky, sneaky, she could do things like put out something. So, does it have to be close by, or can there be a range to it of like sixty or thirty or something? Uh, the Rod does need to be fairly close to the fire. I'm going to say that it needs to be within 10 feet. Okay. That's fair. Just, you know, shenanigans of Mao being able to hide in a corner and do it. She actually has to be up close. All right. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Still pretty neat. Added to the inventory. All right. Last room. There Everybody, is... come on. We opened the door. <laughs> you open the door. There is magic emanating from this chamber. It appears to be a much more... Uh, less uh, strange and arcane chamber and more of a, a desk space. It's got like books on a shelf. It's got a desk covered in papers. Um, it's got like a shelf and crates. There's also oddly a bird cage in the corner of the room. D -d -d -mm. I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna check to see if there's like a canary in it or something. There's not much in the cage. There is a single red feather on the base of the cage. Is on there the inside. A pile of ash? There is nearby. Oh, fuck. Uh, hey guys, I found a weird thing in here. I'm not quite sure what it is. I peek my head in to see if there's magic emanating from any I'm gonna, of it. I'm gonna read some of the letters or grab them just to peek through them real quick to see if maybe there's, like, the plans of the bad guy. How to thwart them. Zimosu is detecting magic as Mao is going through the papers. There appears to be, well, that feather near the ash in the birdcage is emitting magic. Just it must be something with a quill. It must, is it a quill? It is necromancy magic. Oh. This is a weird feather. Alright, Boomcrash, I'm gonna pass you this feather. I go over and hand it to Boomcrash. <laughs> I do not touch the thing. I let Zumasu touch the thing. I'm the metal detector. Boomcrash actually looks it up on the internet. <laughs> Boomcrash. <laughs> Boomcrash has Google. <laughs> Ask Jeeves. <laughs> No one remembers that website anymore. She opens the up like does. The, the, she opens up Pawn Stars and is like, okay, let's see, let's see what people are looking for. I got a guy that knows something. Uh, that guy is telling you that this is a phoenix feather, and if a command word is spoken, it will cast Revivify on a target within touch. Neat. Ooh. Do you want to stuff that into your oh, feathers? Oh, it's a phoenix down. It's a, it's a, it's <laughs> it's a, a phoenix down. down. It is. You could say that it is the downy feather of a phoenix. Yeah. You could. You could literally take that feather boom crash and you can kind of stuff it into your feather. So it's I was. Underneath. I was thinking about like, okay, so what would be a good spot for her new highlight? <laughs> yes. All right. How are we gonna work red right into this ensemble? You can have it above your eyebrows. So you can have an angry eye, but you're only gonna have one angry eye. Okay, Vex. Yeah. Alright, I mean, Boom Crash no, having eyebrow. Revivify is good. Yeah. Alright, uh, Mao, as you were going through the notes, uh, you do find a secret, uh, sort of false bottom in the desk drawer. Ooh. And inside, there is a slip of paper. It's written in Dwarvish. Oh, well, fuck. the text on it is. Yamdal! God damn it, I feel it's so useless. Keep handing shit off to everyone else. Yamdal! Well, we got a crack team here. What do you expect, miss? I, for one, am grateful we have a diverse group. It's fine. If we're just supposed to be in a weird devil cult, where are all the devils? It appears to be... Well, by the dwarven script, I assume it's by our late friend here. He gestures towards the prince, deposed on the ground. Um, it says that, uh, someone named Indignus, the Tyrant Lord, is planning on betraying Tyrannica? Um, not sure what that means. Um, oh, dear. He, he seemed to, uh, want to ally with Tyrannica in order to, uh, curry her favor. It says that Indignus's true name is kept by the Librarian. Uh, must 
be a demon or something. Yeah. I don't know the difference. Who's the librarian? Yeah, we have... need that true name. Have we come across maybe a librarian before? I don't know. There I haven't was... seen anyone since we got in. No, no, not here. I, I figure it could have been somewhere else, too. Like, one of the other cult towers, I mean. So, Indignus is a demon, and Ty is Tyranica just a regular cult person? Who was that again? I don't really know anything about her. I really know, you've she heard the name. down here. Mm -hmm. Leaders oh. of each of the, the spires, she was one of them. Can yeah. I do, like, a, can I do, like, a religion check on any of this? Anything jog in memory? Um, you can do a religion check on the idea of a true name. You can also do one, uh, I guess Indignus would also be a religion check, but that would be much, much harder to identify. Um, I would also allow an investigation check to discover and decipher what this means. I'll do an investigation first. Aw, I got to 15. Was anyone helping me? Quick! <laughs> yeah. um, I'm just kidding. I mean, I, yeah, yeah. Okay. I already rolled it. Yeah. I know. All right. Um, with your investigation, um, you do recall the name Tyrannica was on a encrypted message um, that was Verbosso's lair, right? Verbosso's lair. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was saying to get news to Tyrannica, and then it gave a set of numbers. Upon yes. recollection, you now identify these numbers as coordinates that point here, where you are now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not sure why you guys didn't try that earlier, but, you know. I think we figured out that they were coordinates at one point in time. Yeah, we just but you didn't follow up on it. it. Yeah. No. Nah. <laughs> a lot of shit. The cult mm. has been lingering in the background this entire time. No, I'm curious. A lot of things kind of kept happening. So, so essentially, Tyrannica. For one, finding the thing that mentioned Tyrannica, we found the coordinates that led us here. But who was given the coordinates? That was somebody talking to Tyrannica. Uh, that was someone who had died before they were able to escape. Um, Rabasso destroying the entire lair. Okay. You talked to the dead cultist, uh, and they were able to regale you on that effort. Okay. That's okay. when you discovered that they were horny for betrayal. Yes, that was a very awkward moment. Pretty much. All right, all right. I relay this information. I'm just like, okay, I remember this much, guys. What do you guys make of it? Where would this... Maybe they have a library here? Look, this is a 